Good evening, folks. It's lovely to have you join with us for our midweek, uh, for our time of prayer, our prayer meeting this evening. You're most welcome. Uh, if you're joining us uh, wherever you're from, we're glad that you're a part of our fellowship this evening. We're going to seek God's face in prayer, so let's just pray together. Lord, we thank you again for this fresh opportunity that we have to be still in your presence, to know that you are God. Thank you for that tremendous promise of assurance that we have as believers that where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst and that to bless. So Lord, we thank you that we don't have to plead with you to be present with us, that you have promised that you will be here with us in our midst. We pray that in these moments afforded to us that we will be so aware of your presence in a special and meaningful way. We ask, Lord God, that for those who need to be encouraged, that they might find that encouragement in you and in this time of fellowship tonight. We pray for those of us who need to be challenged that we might find that. We pray that we'll be built up and strengthened in our faith and in our walk with you. And we pray that all of this might be for your glory and your honor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Maybe you would turn with me and your Bibles at home to a short reading this evening before we come to our prayer meeting, uh, just to set the scene, set the context for us of coming into God's presence. I'm going to read from the Old Testament and Psalm 91, Psalm 91, beginning at verse 1 and reading through until verse 8 of the Psalm. We hear God's word. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fouler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. Amen. And we thank God for this reading from his precious word of truth. We're going to come to an item of praise. And the praise is entitled, From the Breaking of the Dawn.
Well, hopefully you enjoyed that item of praise. We used it recently in one of our Sunday morning uh, broadcasts. You'll know that I recently made an announcement about uh, copyright and about taking hymns from, from uh, or praise music from YouTube uh, and from particular groups and putting them straight onto our videos and explaining that, our recordings should say, explaining that uh, we have to be very careful about that. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of research into that. We do have our extended uh, copyright license, which covers certain things, but not others. Uh, and with that in mind, just to let you know the reason we were able to incorporate that hymn from the breaking of the dawn into tonight's service uh, is simply because thanks go to Philip Patton and the members of our own church music group who put that piece of praise together. Therefore, we ourselves as a church own uh, the copyright for that particular piece. So again, we say thank you to Philip and the team of musicians, and it was lovely to hear their voices and their musical talent once more. Just before we come to our time of prayer, uh, just some thoughts from this Psalm 91, uh, from something that I read recently in terms of devotional. And let me just share this with you tonight as we set the context for our prayer time. I wonder if I were to ask you the question, where do you think the safest place in the world is? What kind of answer might you give? Some of you might say, well, it's got to be the vaults under the Bank of England, which are reportedly said to hold 194 billion worth of gold bars. I've never seen them for myself, uh, but I'm told that's the case. Perhaps you might suggest, well, it's the Presidential Emergency Operations Center, the bunker underneath the east wing of the White House in America that serves as a secure shelter and communications hub for the President of the United States of America. We might come up with all kinds of answers like that, bunkers or underground shelters or vaults. But according to this psalm that we read earlier, Psalm 91, the safest place in the world is not a vault, not a bunker, but rather it's simply a shadow. Verse 1 of our psalm reads, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And again in verse 4 we read, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now what does this mean and what's it trying to say to us? Well, the psalmist is referring to the Holy of Holies, the Old Testament tabernacle and the temple. In the Holy of Holies, two cherubim were over the mercy seat and their wings actually touched one another. And so when the psalmist here uses the phrase, under his wings, he means at the mercy seat, where the blood was sprinkled in the presence of the glory of God. The Holy of Holies was God's throne. It was the place of God's glory. In other words, the safest place in the world, the psalmist is telling us, is in fellowship with the Lord God Almighty. Not just visiting the holy place, as the high priest did once a year to intercede for the sins of the people, but dwelling in the holy place. The psalmist here is urging us to live in the holy of holies, to live always, to abide always in the Lord's presence. Let me encourage you to take some time to read through Hebrews chapter 10. And if you do that, you'll discover that we have there an open invitation as believers to enter into the very presence of the Lord God, to dwell in the secret place under his wings at the mercy seat. This is where God meets with us, where his glory is revealed to us, where he gives us guidance and shows us his will. Now, tonight you might think to yourself, a shadow is not much protection for anyone, especially when you compare it to the kind of protection offered by a secure vault or a secret nuclear bunker. But let me tell you this, when that shadow belongs to none other than the Lord God Almighty, then that shadow is a strong, secure 
and mighty protection. So then, as God's people, may we, through our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, seek with God's help and strength and the aid of the Holy Spirit to live always, to abide always in the Holy of Holies, in the presence of the Lord God Almighty, under His shadow, His protection. God invites us into intimate and rich fellowship with Him. What a wonderful and glorious invitation that really is. So now in these moments afforded to us tonight in our time of prayer, let us approach the mercy seat in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Master and our Friend. In the usual way, I'll mention some points for prayer and then I'll leave a suitable time of silence and reflection for you to join with me in prayer in your own home as you listen in. So then we go to prayer. Lord God, we pray this evening for those who are working behind the scenes to support congregations, to support our wider church in practical areas such as finance, such as IT, and many other areas too. We ask God that you would give to all such wisdom and energy and effectiveness in the delivery of their ministry. We pray too for those who are writing devotionals, composing blogs, compiling material for prayer and contributing to podcasts to encourage the church and to encourage God's people in these difficult times in which we are living. Lord, we ask that you would minister in and through them to bless your people in their walk of faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to give thanks this evening for our Children's Day service on Sunday past, for all of the Sunday school teachers and the part that they played in preparing for that broadcast, and also for all the boys and girls themselves who took part, whether it was in Bible reading, in prayer, in leading us through the Lord's Prayer, in singing, we thank you, Lord God, for each and every one of them and their families. We pray and thank you for their witness on Sunday past, both the teachers and the boys and girls. It was lovely to see their smiling faces, their enthusiasm as they spoke of the Lord Jesus Christ and his love for them. And as they reminded us that we don't have to be in a church building to meet with you, that you're with us in every place at any time. So we pray this evening for our Sunday school, for Mark Walker, our Sunday school uh, leader and organizer, along with all of the other teachers and helpers and the boys and girls themselves. May your blessing be upon them, each and every one. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray tonight for all leaders of our church organizations. Normally they would be thinking ahead and making plans and preparations in the will of God for the church year beginning in September. 
and yet we recognize that there is still so much uncertainty about what might happen and when things might happen again. With that in mind, we pray not only for our Sunday school teachers and helpers, we pray too for our youth fellowship leaders, for our GB and BB captains, Marbeth and Malcolm, for the GB and BB leaders and helpers, for Tots Together and the leaders there, for the organizers and leaders of our friendship group, for the members of our PW, for the youth club leaders and helpers, for the choir members, and so many others who are serving you in this place, whether it's with boys and girls or young people or adults. We recognize, Lord God, that a lot goes on to really proclaim your word and to strengthen and encourage one another in the household of faith. We simply pray for all leaders and helpers in these days of uncertainty and ask that they would be ever closer to you, that you would continue to lead and guide and direct them in all of their planning and thinking. Lord God, be with each leader. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the plans being made for a virtual online holiday Bible club at the beginning of the month of August, in particular for Melissa as she heads all of this up, along with help and assistance from Nigel and Amy and others behind the scenes who are helping to contribute to that. Lord God, we pray that you will bless those efforts and that many children's hearts and lives will be touched for you. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to pray for those from our church family who have recently been in the hospital, but now thankfully have returned back to their own homes. We pray that they will continue to know a good and speedy recovery back to better health and strength. Lord, hear our prayer. We give you praise and thanks for the Youth Fellowship virtual meeting, for that Zoom meeting with our Youth Fellowship members on Sunday night past. Thank you for the good number of young people who were present with their parents' permission. And we pray, Lord God, that you'll continue to bless them in these days. We recognize it's a difficult time for our young people, uh, missing uh, their peers in the normal way of interaction with them. 
and missing being in school, having to cope with online learning and all that that has entailed. Lord God, we want to pray that you'll draw close to them, meet their needs. You know what is best for them. May they ever look to you for help and strength. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to pray tonight for Ruth McKee from our church family. We're very, very conscious, Lord, that as she continues to serve you with Latin Link and Arequipa, Peru, uh, with the Shalom School, that she herself, along with others, have been in lockdown for three months now, and that's quite a period of time. We recognize how difficult that must be, that Ruth is only able to get out once a week, and even then, only to go for necessities uh, to the shops. Lord God, we pray for Ruth in these days of having to stay indoors, having to stay at home, not being able to do her normal work and outreach at Shalom, that you will be ever close to her, be her ever constant companion, be her guide, her strength, her hope. We pray, Lord God, that you'll be with all of the folks at the Shalom School and that you'll be close to them during these days of lockdown. We pray for Ruth's family here at home, for uh, Desi, her father, for Pearl, her mother, and the family circle. Lord God, understandably, at times they will be concerned for Ruth and all that's happening out in Arequipa. But may they be assured of our many thoughts and prayers for them as a family and the wonderful promise of your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember in your presence tonight those in our congregation who are shielding, those who are over 70, those, Lord, with underlying health issues. We've been mentioning our children and our young people and their leaders and helpers, and our thoughts turn now in these moments to those in our congregation who are in that older bracket. Lord God, may they be aware that we have not forgotten about them, that they are much in our thoughts and prayers. We know that by the very nature of age and stage of life that they are much more vulnerable in all of the, this. We simply pray for your protection and ask that you would be their shield and their comforter. Lord, hear our prayer. And then tonight, Lord, in our time of prayer, we remember our government in their decision-making, especially at a national level. We again pray for our Prime Minister, and then at a local level, we pray for our Northern Ireland Executive, for the First and Deputy First Minister, 
for Robin Swan, our health minister, and others who are involved in making some very difficult decisions, trying to do their best in what is such an unsure time. We pray that you will give them guidance, leadership, and direction in these days. Lord, hear our prayer. And this evening we pray for all of our churches. We recognize that recently the Northern Ireland Executive Stormont have given churches an indicative date for reopening. And yet we're very conscious, those of us involved in leadership within our congregations, that there is so much for us yet to organize to make that safe for everyone. We recognize that in these days and weeks, Kirk sessions along with church committees and other folk in leadership will have important decisions to make with guidance from our General Assembly and from our presbyteries, perhaps, regarding when it might be safe to reopen. Lord God, for all involved in that process, we pray that we will know your presence in a mighty way that we will know what your will might be in all of this. And we pray that our church families and congregational members will be patient with us as we try to grapple with these important and necessary issues. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, tonight, we bring before you those who are working behind the scenes so diligently and so well in helping us to bring these broadcasts, to make them accessible to our church members and to others who listen in. And so tonight, we give you thanks for Malcolm and Nigel and for all that they are doing behind the scenes in terms of recording and editing and all the work that comes with that. These things don't just happen in a moment or two. And Lord, we give you thanks for their obvious talents, obvious talents and abilities in this area and that they are prepared to use them for the building up of your kingdom and for witness. We thank you as well for Philip uh, behind the scenes, Lord God, Philip Patton and trying to help us with the music side of things and the music group for all that they have been doing so that we can present items of praise and worship. We can hear the voices of some of our own folk, hear the instrumentalists, and have cause to give you praise. We bring all of these prayers together in the prayer that you have taught us, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for joining with us for this prayer meeting tonight. Uh, you'll know that in the usual way at nine o'clock, we'll have our virtual Zoom prayer time for those who would like to join us. And at the usual time, uh, 8.30, uh, 
around now. It should be up on our church Facebook page, the details to allow you to come in and join with us, the ID and the password that you will need. Simply again, please put up your, your ID, your identity, your name, so that we know who is coming along to meet with us for prayer in that usual way. Can I also just say that uh, we're very thankful for a plan that we have for Friday the 3rd of July at the time of 7 p.m. for a table quiz for our boys and girls, for our children. We had one recently for our adults, which was much enjoyed, hosted by Malcolm. Uh, and this time, uh, we're looking forward to one uh, hosted by Mark uh, Walker. He's going to host that for our boys and girls, and that'll be Friday the 3rd of July at the time of 7 p.m. We'll put up details about that closer to the time on our church Facebook page. Uh, I think these then are all of the announcements at this stage. Obviously, uh, I want you to keep in your prayers and thoughts. I mentioned in my prayer meeting tonight that indicative date of when churches might reopen. Uh, of course, we are being told that we have to bear in mind that the government might have more to say about that uh, this week in terms of how that might look. And then, obviously, in presbyteries and amongst Kirk sessions and committees, there's a lot for us to discuss and plan and prepare for. I'll say more about that, hopefully, uh, next week when I have more details. But there's a lot for us to get our heads around. Please do keep those of us in leadership much in our prayers. This is all new to us. We've never been here in this situation before. And we ask that you keep us in our prayers and that God would give us much discernment and much wisdom. And now we come to the benediction. The grace of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the love of God who is our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this night. And indeed we pray forevermore. Amen.